Hey, 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 welcome back. This is the Helpful Homeless Petra, Matt Yake, up in Hartford, Wisconsin, down in our studio, and I got a special guest in here today. We have Sean Mangan of Lifetime Roof and Chimney out of Germantown, and Sean and I, we go way back, man. We've been knowing each other for a long time now. A long now. time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Sean is uh, going to come in today, and we're going to be talking a lot about uh, roofing basics and things like that, but we're going to go through our regular stuff, your tip of the day, your, your save a buck, all that kind of fun stuff will be on the show today. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. If you wouldn't mind, take a moment to hit the subscribe button down below, hit that bell notification to let us uh, make you aware when we put out new content and a thumbs up if you like our episode today we really appreciate it also if you have any questions about your house whether it's about roofing any specific questions about roofs or chimneys that you'd like to ask Sean or you just have a question that you want to find out from a certified master inspector give us a call <laughs> or, or you can drop a, a line on uh, the comments there and we'll be happy to help you out in any way that we can to make your project or your home go a little bit smoother all right so the first thing we're going to cover today is we're going to cover our defect of the week so we uh, Obviously, as a homeless petrol company, we come up with a lot of interesting and sometimes funky defects. Um, the one today is uh, something that we come across very regularly, but I have yet to discuss it on any video of our 150 some odd videos or any of our live shows, and that is drain uh, configurations or poor plumbing drains. And we come across them all the time, whether they're leaking, they're not leaking, whatever, ventilation issues, there's all kinds of funky stuff, okay? Um, but Check this one out. Come on, man. So, <laughs> some serious craftsmanship there. Oh, my gosh, dude. Yeah, that is somebody going to Menards, <laughs> right. talking to the 16-year-old kid. Right. And it's like, hey, man, how can I do this plumbing thing? And he's I like, well, we you got these two pieces together. Yeah, yeah, and you can go anywhere with it, man. It bends all over the place. See this? And it's like, holy cow. I really wish they would not even sell these things, you guys. Um, those, uh, Tammy, bring that back up again for me, would you? Those flexible drains, you guys, every one of those little creases in there is going to leak. I promise you, it's going to leak, okay? Um, also, if you try to go ahead and stick anything in there to clean it, you're going to jab right yeah. through the side of it and just make a worse problem for yourself. What we're talking about when we do PVC drains like that, it's just buying the right pieces, you know? Right. Well, and something smooth. Yeah. Everything's getting caught in those ridges. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, I mean, if, you, if you've ever cleaned out your wife's hair clog out of uh, a drain, yes. oh, my... <laughs> Yeah, it's disgusting. But uh, those drains, you guys, they the, the the pieces that they make at the store, um, they come make them longer than they need to, and they have a compression fitting on there. You can slide back and forth to give yourself some maneuverability, but still make a good, tight, smooth walled connection. And it's just it doesn't take a lot, you know. It's just a, a, an extra fifteen minutes in the aisle, you know. Maybe watching a YouTube video or something, you can be an expert pretty quickly, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, buying something flexible like that, listening to the sixteen-year-old kid, nothing against sixteen-year-old kids at right. Menards. I'm glad they're working, you know, work hard. Um, but uh, you want to get a little bit better education than that. And you're, when you're doing that kind of stuff, your house not only is it costing you money to buy that stuff, but now you're gonna have to fix it eventually, you know, and do it the right way. Wonder if you had done it the right way in the, the first time. Time, eh, wouldn't right. be, they wouldn't be having the issue. Also, um, don't use plumber's putty or not plumber's putty, plumber's dope, pipe no dope, dope, you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That epoxy dope. That, yeah. That, they don't use that anymore. Oh my gosh. They'll mix it up and then they'll shove it in there. <laughs> hey, it doesn't leak, you know, or electrical tape or duct tape. I'm like, it doesn't take a lot to do a good plumbing drain. Little you rubber know? gaskets, all you need. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that is our defect of the week. The next thing we got is the save a buck. Uh, it's getting into that time of year, you guys, making sure your gutters are clean. Um, we had a hailstorm up here uh, two weeks ago, something like that. And, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago, April 19th it was. But, yep. you know, you just see all those the hail balls filling up your gutters or whatever, and the water just flowing over. It was killing me. I'm like, and there's nothing I can do about it. I'm like, I know my gutters are clean. It's just it's all filled right. up with this hail and uh just the dying to see all that water go right next to the foundation well you guys had about two inches here right yeah, yeah. of hail yeah yeah it's yeah built up I, yeah <laughs> it was pretty crazy the the sump pump kicked on hasn't hasn't kicked on in years you know and i'm like oh this better not happen you know and the sump pump worked thankfully everything did its job but it was like Ugh. but you guys, all those pollens and things that are falling out of the tree are going to clog up your gutters. So clean them out. Uh, keep those gutters nice and clean to get moving that water to the where it's supposed to go instead of going next to your house. Um, it's an easy job when you take care of it on a regular yeah. basis. When you let it go and you let it clump up to this hard 
mass. That's when you're up on the 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 ladder with a sh- little gutter shovel and whatever else. To try- oh my gosh, you're just doing yourself a disservice. Go out and get an extender for your shop vac or, to, or not for your shop vac for your um, leaf blower. You know, yep. and just walk your house once or twice a month. You know, and it's not that hard. And then it'll just blow right out of there, and you won't have an issue. You know, definitely. Or you can get out. gutter guards. Or that gutter guards. Too. Gutter guards help a lot. Yeah, I mean, especially with big leaf situations, sure. if you have a lot of trees and especially stuff. Especially got like the that. helicopter trees. Boy, those will kill everything. Uh, those will clog that up like a heartbeat, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, the gutter guards are um, good, but some people think that they put them on there and they don't have to ever clean their gutters. Oh, you again. still got to clean them. That, that's something up. that you don't yeah, understand. Yeah. The fine particulates at the bottom, yep. they'll build up and clog up. It might take a little bit longer, but then it's even a worse pain to take care of it at that point. Yeah, yeah. And the gutter guards are an expense, but it does make you not have to clean them as frequently right. and less likely that you're going to have a clog of, of sorts. So, but uh, it does not eliminate your need for cleaning nope. and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, you know, clean those gutters out. Get them get nice and clean and keep them clean, um, especially during the rainy periods. We want to make sure that we're moving that water to where it can safely disperse into the soil and not get into your foundation or flood your home. Um, it, I mean, a flooded basement is a new furnace, a new water heater. It's a, probably foundation damage. You know, um, it's all kinds of problems. So you just don't want to mess with anything like that. Um, now, uh, as far as our topic of the day and why we have Sean here today, um, Sean, you've been doing roofing and chimneys for... Uh, I've been in business for 26 years 26 now. years. That's a long time, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, and primarily uh, these days, Sean's been doing a lot of chimney work because that he's really good at that. And there's not a lot of good guys around that do that kind of work. You know, that's true. There's more work than there are guys out there to do it. That's for sure. For sure. I mean, you can go out and find, you, you can throw a, a, a rock and hit a roofing company these days <laughs> that's um, pretty, just because yeah. they, they can charge so much right now. Yeah. I know all, it's amazing. They're all popping up all over the place. We, you know, back when I was big into the roofing, you know, the rates weren't anything close to the, to the profit margin you're making nowadays. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, we when uh, when I, I talked to a client yesterday and uh, they were getting their roof replaced or whatever, and she's like twenty seven thousand yeah. dollars. I'm like, is this like a huge house? She's like, oh no, it's just a one story ranch. I'm like, I know. What? I ran into a lady who got charged thirty five thousand for a twenty five square one layer tear off. Low pitch. Holy cow. That's a low thou- pitch, too? That's a 1000 bucks oh my a square gosh. plus. Dude, guys would be falling over themselves to get those jobs. Well, yeah. You know, they don't have to, do, don't have to deal with any steep stuff or whatever. You don't have to right. deal with all the safety stuff. You don't have to worry about OSHA as much. Well, that, you know, it depends how many, you know, people you're getting bids from. Because a lot of times yeah. you'll get people that are bidding fairly normal because they're having their own crews do the work and not subbing it. Yep. And you can, you, a lot of times if you get enough, you can get probably close to half of that knocked off. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and that's a lesson. I mean, it, whenever you have a large repair item that you need to take, need to do at your home, get multiple bids. Yeah. Get, get a number of guys out there. And the guys that are good are all going to be saying the same thing. They're all going to be offering the same product and stuff like right. that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Most of those there, even the ones that are costing twice as much, they are still using the exact same products. There's just more salesmen, more overhead. Yep. And, uh, you know, everyone's got to make their bucks. So you can find someone that actually has their own guys. Yep. You're going to save all that money. Yeah, well, and you, the, the, when you talk about the guys that are showing up at your house, you don't want the guy that's got a bunch of holes in his truck or whatever and, and you know, is just ripped jeans and just a mess. That's not the person you want. You also don't want the guy that shows up with the fancy car, you know, and the lettering all over it. And <laughs> yeah. he's, he's dressed to the nines, you know, and he comes out in his polo shirt and his little neck turf or whatever. Right. That's not the guy you want either because you've got to pay his salary and he's right. not going to get on that roof and do anything, you know. Um, you want that guy that's going to be in the middle. It's going to charge you a fair price. You don't want the bottom, the bottom dollar guy. You don't want the top dollar guy, the guy in the middle. Yeah, those are harder and harder to find nowadays. Yeah, for sure. For so. sure, yeah. Well, and the, a lot of times, a lot, a lot of the upselling that happens is with uh, you know, warranty services, sure. warranty guarantees, and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, right now, all, all shingles are basically considered a, le- a limited lifetime warranty, which is, you know, I guess they won't give you an exact number, but it's between 35 and 50 years. Yeah. So, and I don't know why they change it to go in that direction because they used to be 25 year 40 year and 50 year and now they just lumped into one thing and uh, pick a number (laughs) (laughs) it must be protection for them on their end somehow you know it's gotta be and those guys they always try to find some way to weasel out of those warranties (laughs) and stuff anyway oh they use the wrong kind of nail spacing (laughs) you know and that kind of I'm like, come on, guys. You know, let's get, let's be real. Somebody spent a lot of money buying your product, sure. they because you said you warranted it, and well, now you're going to try to weasel your way you out. You know, and there's it. a couple of good companies that that are, are generally always warranty their stuff, like um, the Timberline series from mm-hmm. GAF, yeah. and the Oak Ridge series from uh, Owens Corning. 
Okay. Those two have been around a long time. I've heard and a lot the, of good stuff about Owens Corning. Yeah, Owens Corning was probably the best on warranty stuff. Uh, when they come out, they're not, I mean, they're not trying to, you know, buy you a whole new roof, but yeah. they, they, they aren't going to, you know, cut you down to nothing. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's worth the, <laughs> worth the a little extra product and stuff. Um, and, and it's not like, uh, I mean, certain teed, there's, they're all over the place, but they're, their new product line is good, but they've had some they've really, had so really many, bad um, they, claim, they, claim, claim, claim periods over like a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. With you know, recall. And oh stuff my like that. god! I mean, it was they had a lot of issues. They don't just do roofs either. They do yeah insulation, siding. Yeah. They do absolutely everything you can imagine on the outside and inside of the house. And during know? that one claim period, they are they are actually they did people real good. They actually included some labor money oh, because because some of the products wow. I think failed in like six years. Yeah, you know, and at that point. You, 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 <laughs> You can't just say, hey, all the labor's on you now. <laughs> yeah, and what we're talking about, you guys, there was some certainty product that came out, and the granular just started to fall yeah. off the thing. Like, it, it was it, 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 literally, yeah, literally they would turn, you, the shingles would turn black. All the aggregate would be in the gutter yep. within a few years. Yeah, yeah it, so. was, it was ugly. It was ugly. Um, we're going to get into some of the uh, roofing basics um, today, and the first thing we're going to talk about is what the what purpose of your roof is. So your roof has um, a specific purpose in your home, and primarily it's to protect the home. Okay, yep. um, so protecting the home from water, snow, and ice. Um, outside of that, appearance is that's entirely up to you. But that the main pur- one that is not a main purpose of your roof to, to look good. Um, however, some people would say a good looking shingle can make your house look a lot better, right? <laughs> that's right. Okay? Um, but uh, th- that those people also are putting on green shingles and all kinds of other <laughs> blue crazy. or blue. Arbor oh blue. my god. <laughs> I saw one of those. I did one of those uh, quite some years, quite a few years ago. Eh? Yeah, yeah. The sparkly blue—that's yeah. the color of the shingles. You know, some people they just don't have that vision. You right. know, you got a purple house. I need a blue roof. Yeah, yeah. but you know what I saw? There was yeah. a guy at our um, like a trade table. You know, and yeah. they were talking roofing and stuff like that. He had a uh, where he could take a picture of a house or whatever, and he could oh, switch he, out the shingles yeah, to make it look. Cool. And yeah. I'm like, that's awesome. You know, so you can kind of see what it's going right. to look like, uh, sort of. You know. Um, before you buy the shingles because when you're looking at a little sample board it's hard to visualize yeah when you're looking at a sample board versus 24 squares Ooh. on your yeah. roof you and know? even when you look at a sample board inside as compared to just in the sunlight mm-hmm. it's drastically different yeah you know? yeah. So it's like, yeah yeah uh, definitely when we were when i managed the apartments or whatever and we were doing some replacement shingles and stuff i actually took the sample boards up and set them yep. on the roof to see what was the right product for us but um yeah so that's the purpose of our roof okay now the roof has a number of different parts or systems and the these are some of these things are in every roof. Other things aren't in every roof. Okay, it kind of depends on uh, the the type of roof and the style of roof that you have. Um, first of all, all roofs are going to have sheet inner decking, whether it's a flat roof, uh, steep pitch roof, low, low pitch roof, whatever. That's you're going to have some sort of sheet inner decking. Um, generally speaking, today three quarter ply is that what we're five A's? Mostly half five A's. Yeah, five a lot A's. of half inch out there. Too. Yeah, if, yeah. You, if, you, if you get the, um, yeah, it, you don't see uh, no three quarter inch roof boards anywhere. No, no real wood anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the thing with the roof decking is it gives you that uh, stability of the roof. Going right. to make it last longer, perform better, make it less likely to get sagging in between your your uh, rafters or in between your um, trusses and stuff. Um, once in a while, I'll come across a roof that's only got like uh, three A's on it or whatever. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. And yeah, you're crunching every step of the way. And I, then even worse, if you got them, they're set at 24 inches. Holy cow. Yeah, you get some real <laughs> sag. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Or some of those modified trusses where they had the they had the truss and oh. they were like four feet apart and they put <laughs> yeah, these the purlins. Big, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, this is bad news. And the only thing you can do there is, is hey, the client... Your your sheathing is not sufficient, and right. your your span between roof supports is too great. Right, and you can give them the option. I mean, a lot of those will still last 50, 60, 70 years. I've had to work on them, and yeah, you know, sometimes it works. But man, if I, if you have the choice and you got the money, you swap it out while you yeah, can. It's not it's not pretty, you know. But the only time to do it is when you're replacing the roof. Right, you're not going to do one or the other. You got to do both yep. at the exact same time. Um, so sheathing is important, um, and almost every house today is going to be OSB. Um, some of the guys are using zip sheathing that is out now. Yeah, you know? I don't know. I'm not yeah, familiar yeah, with it. It's that green stuff, you know. That, oh, okay. That's yeah. the green stuff. That it, they tape the joints and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. They also have a uh, uh, kind of a paste you can put over the joints if you don't want to use the tape. I wouldn't hmm. use the tape. I'd like the, uh, the adhesive option be, yeah. to be better, you know. Um, what is the best kind of shingle roofing material? I don't know. Everybody can have a different opinion about that. Right. I mean, the really only shingle roofing material nowadays is uh, fiberglass. Yeah. I mean, it, it's the same as the old asphalt shingles. It's just a, f- a fiberglass mesh that's pressed in the center. Yeah. And it's going to dissipate the heat better because of the fiberglass. Oh, yeah. They cut easier. Yeah. I mean, they last longer. It's 
Yep, and cost wise, uh, you, 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 there's the material and what's reasonable, you know. But mm-hmm. then there's also you got to factor into the cost and the things like that. And, and some people will say, "Oh, metal roof." Well, metal roof has downsides too, and and sure. and yeah. the the architectural shingle, like we're talking about, with the uh, uh, fiberglass, has its downsides as well. Right. But it, and with the you know advances in the you know the architectural shingles, they last just as long as the metal roof. The metal roof Usually. selling point used to be it's a fifty year roof. Well, now your shingles can get you close to there. Yeah, yeah. But the even with the it. steel roof, they suggested it gets recoded at twenty five. Mm-hmm. So yeah. well, and depending on what kind of if you put on a, a right. one, the one where you're sticking screws through every so often then you got those little rubber washers oh, that wear out and then you're in trouble the man. menards brand the menards yeah the corrugated <laughs> steel ones you called know? it crap flap crap flap <laughs> yeah yeah i mean if you're doing a standing seam metal roof that's Bad. that's one thing Right, you know? that yeah, that's what you want to go for. Yeah. A good standing seam. Yeah, you know? <laughs> a good standing seam is really the only way to go if you're doing a metal roof, unless it's on a barn where you don't right. care if you get a couple <clears throat> leaks here and there. You know, we have a pole building up north, and it's with the the, the lab crap. You know, and it, we get a couple of leaking washers or whatever. So I, that means I got to get up on the roof and I got to find these yeah. washers and replace them. And I'm like, holy crap, there's a lot of washers <laughs> right. here. You know, um, so I'm just basically replacing every one that looks like it's cracked a little bit. You know, sure. because anytime we get a, a rainstorm of any kind. The, it's leaking through and stuff, you know? So, yeah, so the best kind, it's all relative to um, a number of different things. Some people would say, oh, cedar, cedar shake is the only way oh. to go. Oh, my God. Yeah, if you got $10 million you can spend on your roof right. every so often, you know, it's just. A couple of years ago, I replaced a 70-square uh, cedar shake roof, yeah. and uh, she wanted heavy shakes. That's right it. now. Now, you guys, I know you might not know what squares are. They're 10 by 10. A 10 by 10 section yeah, square. Yeah, so 70 square is like double what a normal house would be. Right. Five years ago, that cost was three hundred dollars a square for material. Um, when I did it, when wood was very expensive, it was six hundred dollars a square. Holy cow! Double so the she price. paid forty thousand dollars, a little over forty thousand uh, dollars, as compared to twenty thousand would have been you know only a few years apart yeah well so. and the thing with cedar shake and see and that's sh- just the material that's just the material that's not even the installation <laughs> right. or nothing you know yeah. nor the maintenance i mean yeah you're the looking maintenance at, is another big the maintenance cost. is another thing i, mean, I, got, I just couldn't see doing it oh my know? god i can't i like when it comes to wisconsin i never <laughs> recommend wood products period right. on the outside of the house it just doesn't make any sense you saturate them in the winter you curl them up with the heat in the summer and it's you invite like the woodpeckers the, and right. the moss and the algae i mean everything just, lives under there. yeah there's so <clears throat> many great materials out there that will decrease the maintenance level that you have to do on your home on a regular basis and it'll make your home cheaper to operate it'll be cheaper to maintain it'd be you can spend more time enjoying it instead of taking care of it I mean, there's a lot of pluses, um, but definitely any th- time you're thinking about putting in a product in the outside of your house, move. If, if wood is an option, cross it off, move away from it because there is so so I mean, much maintenance. Yeah, Always. I mean, putting and, and yeah, the the they might say say it's cheaper to put wood trim on than PVC trim. Okay, sure, but what's the long term cost going to be? You're going to pay. You're going to have to replace that wood four or five times before you move out of this house where you put the PVC in, you're never gonna have to replace it again. You know, so there's things to consider with all that, but um, you know, it's all personal preference. Um, Me personally, I think a a nice architectural shingle is the way to go. Um, When I'm dealing with my home that I will live in on an everyday daily basis. It's the most maintenance free. Yep. And in the most, you know, the mid range price. And it's very repairable. I mean, (laughs) it's 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 available, you know, and that kind of stuff. Um, Up North, I'm a metal roof guy just because, I'm not there all the time. Right. I can't look out. Look well, at that's the what roof you do up north. You want the snow to slide right. I off. want the snow to slide right <laughs> off, and my my house is does. I don't have a basement. I don't care right. if the water gets yeah, next exactly. to it. You know, um, and uh, and I'll, I, you know at the same time, it's a. Um, we have a lot of trees, so there's a lot of shade, oh. and so in a lot in a very shady area, uh, uh, architectural shingle is going to gather a lot of algae, a lot of moss, a lot yeah. of other things that are going to require regular maintenance. Where my metal roof, I can go up there with a pressure washer if I want and just hose it there off. She goes. Yeah, and that's uh, that's uh, that's the way to do it. And we we have uh, on the pole building, we have uh, the the lap crap, you know, with the screws and the washers. Yeah. On the house, we actually have a standing seam, which yep. is uh, really been pretty good the only thing i don't like about the metal roof um concept up there and, and in period is like roof protrusions you know um oh yeah yeah and I, stuff i mean they're always getting snapped off by the ice <laughs> sheets no yeah. matter if they move you you can put the you know those snow gems everywhere you want mm-hmm. but those still get wrecked as well yeah i go so. up there and i'll the the, the the ice will come down in one big chunk or whatever and they'll take off all the little <laughs> breaks that i put on and just bend them like they're noodles yeah. you know it's like holy cow um but up there is a different thing too up where uh, our place is up in florence so we're almost up to lake superior so we get a lot of that uh i mean we'll go up there we had probably what 
40 inches of snow sitting on right, the roof. Right, you get a lot of that coming oh, yeah. off the lake. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, it, we get a lot more snow up there than we do down here. So it's a little bit more Well, and the issue. darker color when the sun hits, it just slides off the sure. roof, which is nice. So but. then we don't have as much leaking inside the house. Well, so it's always good. Less leak in the house. We don't have good. any leaking inside the house. If we had leaking in the side house, I would do something. Come on, you're talking Sorry. to help a homeless no, man your lady. Uh-oh. No leaking in the house. <laughs> my apologies. My there's no leaking in my house. There's leaking in my barn, but there's no and leaking. That's acceptable. And that's acceptable because it's a barn. All I have in there is ATVs and trailers and a basketball court. But not in the house. The house does not have any leaking. Um, so, yeah. That's Telling the, you're telling the world, lady. <laughs> Come on. Okay. All right. So let's get into it. So right. the next thing we have is ice and water shield. Now this is a newer revelation. Um, if you go back uh, 20 years, it was not a thing. Right. It um, wasn't even code then. Yeah. It wasn't code. Right. Wasn't required. It was just the the guys that were doing the primo jobs were, right. were using this stuff. You but know? I worked on the North Shore. They wanted ice and water shield. Certain yeah. neighbors had ice and water shield. Yeah. And, and, and today though, it's every house. Yeah. And, yeah. And it should be on there. You know, it doesn't. And it, the cost of it now is so much more cheaper, and it doesn't take any longer to put on yep it's worth a little bit of extra protection yeah and the ice and water shield you guys if you can imagine um a, a sheet of rubber that is really sticky on one side and it has like that plastic film that you peel off on it mm-hmm. you know you basically run it out and uh, you have one guy hold the, the the end and the other guy grabs the plastic sheet and goes down the other end or whatever and you stick it down and once it's stuck it is stuck. it is not <laughs> coming off yeah um it, it's very difficult to get off but the nice thing is it's a, a rubber so it's going to have a self-healing membrane so as you uh, put nails through or anything like that it's going sure, to self-heal it closes off. It. yep and uh, also if you do end up getting um ice ice dams or anything like that that's going to propel it it, it filters the, the water yeah right back out to the gutter instead of damaging the wood underneath or coming through into your house. Yep. General practice these days is six feet from the uh, the eave. Three. Is that three? Is yeah, three. Six feet is extra. Six feet is extra. Okay. Yeah. And so, so three feet from the eave, and then also in your valleys, you're going to yeah, have three, three feet, feet on either side, right? Yeah, but a lot of people want to do six feet if it's a, a lower pitch. But really, yeah. Yeah, what code is, it's three. Yep. Um, now, ice and water shield on the entire roof probably a waste of money. Right, yeah, but a lot of people do do that. Do they? Really? Some people are really fanatical about it. Yeah, so I've yeah. only done it on a few places, but yeah, yeah. And and, and the only t- only place that I would think it would make sense is if you have a really low pitch. Yep. That's where you're going to put right. on a composition dimensional shingle or something like that. Um, and j- that's just because it's that extra layer of protection. The lower right. your pitch, the more likelihood you're going to get water intrusion and stuff. Um, and we'll get into pitch a little bit later. But pitch is one of those things that can really make your roof last a long time. Sure. Um, but it can also be detrimental to your uh, yeah. roof as well if you're going the other way. You yeah. know, so, yeah. And but, if, it, if, it's, uh, if it's a low enough pitch where you feel like you needed to coat the whole thing with ice and water shield, you should probably just be using a membrane on the whole roof anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, the the next thing we have is valleys and flashing. So valleys, uh, j- we talked about ice and water shield in the valleys. So valleys are where two roof surfaces are coming together, and we're going to um, coat that with that rubberized um, ice and water shield. Um, but now there's different opinions about valleys. I'm oh, yes. big on metal valleys. Okay, Yeah, I, it's the only valleys that I would use. Yeah, the uh, push, what, 10 years ago was for these Cali valleys, you know? Well, yeah, they it- now are, I'm not sure. Are, you're not talking about a closed cut valley. Are you talking about where they flip the shingle talking, and just butt it? Where they flip and lap them? Where they lap up? Oh, that that that's a weave. A weave. Yeah, yeah but the California Valley oh. or the Hollywood Valley, we call it that because it's that's acting like a real it. valley. Yeah. That's a closed cut. Yeah. But yeah, the uh, I think the 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 Hollywood Valleys now is where they take a regular shingle and flip it so that you can see the exposed side of the valley. Then they just butt the the regular roof shingle up and cut it off. They don't even make the full cuts, uh. and that's generally what you see from the larger. Crews to come from down south, the hail chasers sure. and that. Yeah, and yeah. I think now, uh, I think it is GAF who has just made a, a type of an announcement saying that they will no longer warranty their roofs that type where of people that are doing the Hollywood Valley. Yeah, but I don't know if that's for sure. That was just someone told me that at, at one of the distributors. So. Yeah, yeah, um, it, either, but, it, but either, it's a crappy valley. It's a crappy, know? it's a crappy valley. <laughs> whether whether it, whether it's a weave, whether it's a, a Cali Valley, or Hollywood Valley, whatever. Yeah. All are bad. The metal valley is really right the because only anything, way to go. whatever else you're doing, you're pulling the aggregate off. So yep. yeah, the metal you know on two nice channels, let it run. Yep. And the metal you guys is going to extend up underneath the shingles, probably a good 10, 12 inches, yeah, right? Depending on the size. Some are eighteen, some are twenty four. You yeah. know, so. Yep. And it's going to give you a nice durable valley. It's going to last a long time. It's going to have a smooth transition for the water to flow and run away. Yep. Uh, your uh, tree debris and things like that isn't going to sit in there. It's going to be pushed away by the water rushing through there and stuff. Yep. Uh, so it's going to help you keep your uh, roof cleaner and stuff. So I think. 
think just metal valleys really the only way to go. If you have somebody coming at you proposing other valley, oh, we do that all the time. Tell them to get lost or do it your way. You're the boss. It's your one paid the bill. Um, and if you don't want to be paying extra bills down the road, put a metal valley in. Right. You know, yeah. you go a little bit further north, like Fond du Lac, Oshkosh, all those places. They're all closed cut valleys. I'm like. Why is there no metal What's valleys? Even in Beaver Dam. Really? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Hmm. But anyway, yeah, I, yeah. See, I see so much of that. I mean, now that they're all getting replaced, but yeah, yeah but still, it's like, yeah. Yeah, and, and those, those situations, when you take off the the, the layer of, of roof, uh, the next time you're going to find all kinds of water damages <laughs> and all kinds of other things. So it's just a bad idea. Um, and uh, getting into that, along with the valleys and flashings, also is drip edge. So drip edge is a uh, product that basically when the water, if the water comes over the edge of the shingle, it's going to hit that metal and be kicked off and away from the home. Um, uh, uh, something that some guys skip, and I'm like, how are you skipping it? Or on the gable or on the gutter edge? On the gutter edge. Oh, I don't know. How, how could you skip it yeah, on the gutter edge? I don't on the gable, I can see it, because a lot of people don't want you know, metal if they like the wood look. Sure. So then you just overhang your shingle, and then it acts as the same thing as a metal drip edge. But yeah, yep. on the gutter, I the, just don't even know. The yeah. one builder I had, he arg- had got an argue with me, argument with me. <laughs> I just me put a gap there. Because he had, a, he had, a, he had <laughs> yeah. the, the shingle overhang and a gap. And he's like, there's enough gap there that it can't happen. The shingle's overhanging. And I'm like. You know how many little critters go in there, too, on top of it? You know, they'll just shred everything. Yeah, that's not. It's, it was just it was just him because uh, his buyer was there with me. So okay. he's trying to defend what they did so that they it. can still want to buy it. And I understand why he's doing it, but it still doesn't make it sure. okay. And, you know, in theory, that's it's probably okay. you got a big enough overhang. It's probably going to be fine. But really, what, do you want something to just be fine or do you three, want it to be done right? Yeah, three quarters of a million dollar home. <laughs> right. And this guy's sitting there arguing with me. I'm like, holy try, man. Trying try, try to get over it on $100 for the drip edge. Yeah, and that's what it is. I mean, and it's, it's the drip edge is something you can even, the shingles are brand new, so they're still not adhered. Right. So you can still go back there and put it in oh, after and the so, fact. Yeah, it's easy just to slide it in afterwards. Like yeah. even when you're replacing gutters after the roof you can put the gutters on and then slide it in and put the hanger in exactly. it doesn't take very long it doesn't take very much yep okay. uh now the next thing is roof penetrations and i'm not a big fan i don't i every time i come across roof penetrations it's leak point it's uh it's you know, always a problem if yeah. you can get rid of one on your roof get rid of it yeah <laughs> when you thought i mean if if uh, you have high efficiency equipment and you're not using conventional efficiency equipment and you have a mechanical chimney yeah or even a or even a brick one that you're not using, yeah. take it down because at some point you got to maintain the chimney, or you got to fix the flashing, or you got to do both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a lot of guys out there that are going to say they're going to come and fix your flashing aren't going to do it correctly. <laughs> they're going to use tar. <laughs> they're going to use tar. They're going to goop it all up there. And yeah, the leak stop for now. Right. It's a six month band aid that creates a water trap. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And and then not only is that is it going to cause a problem for leaking, but also then it's going to cause you're the rotting. Deterior- yeah, you're going to yeah. rot the wood. You're going to deteriorate the masonry. It's going to have yep. just a, a compounding issue. And like when you have somebody come out there, oh, I'm going to fix your chimney and they don't come out and they put don't put a cap on the chimney yeah. um, and they just put do a wash or something like that i'm like Dude. oh yeah that we yeah when you get out of chimney if your concrete cap is a problem you need to fix it with concrete if a guy gets up there and can fix it with a paintbrush it ain't fixed no it ain't <laughs> fixed that's not gonna yeah, cut right. it yeah i mean and gr- now the, the problem that you have is that the homeowner is at a disadvantage because they're not going to get up they there and are going to look at it you know um they don't have a drone they're flying around that right and then you know so some of the, that stuff, if you get the more expensive, you know, spreadable stuff, it can last five, six, seven years. Yeah. But, I mean, they don't know. You know, concrete's going to last you 20. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or and more. a lot of times they're charging the same amount of money, too, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah. I mean, you put that concrete up there and you put a good uh, concrete sealer on that, it's going to last a yeah. real long time. You know, and granted, you may, because if it's in the sunlight and stuff like that, you may need to um, do some sealer and stuff occasionally. Every, every once in a while, you got to take a look. But for the most part, when you pour a slab, it's, it's going to stay. You're good to go. Yeah. You set your forms, you now, got five inches of concrete. It's, when it's you guys, hang out. When you guys do that, you're doing uh, what kind of... Uh, like rebar or anything like that inside no, of that? No, nah, not usually. Not really. Not usually. You don't yeah. run into a lot of it. I, so every once in a while you do, but it's not really moving and you're not putting yeah. a lot of weight on it. You set your forms and yep. pour it. And then I put a, I put a finish on it when I'm done. And sure. Overhangs probably what? Two, three inches. Uh, it's, well, we use a, you use the two by, so it's a one and a half, one inch. and a half inch overhang. Yeah. As yeah. long as you have some overhang there, you're going to right. And then it's not running effect. down the bricks, pulling out the tops of the mortar joints. All kinds of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, but anytime that you can not have something go through your roof, your roof's better off. Okay. It, it, those are leak points. Every house has plumbing vents. Is there a different way that we can send plumbing vents out of the house instead of going through the roof? Um, I don't know. I, I, I always just see them coming straight up through. Probably yeah. it's the easiest thing to do. It's probably the easiest thing to the do. Thing to and do. they but put I'm that sure, rubber boot on. Right. But I'm like, you just need to allow air into the plumbing system for, to, for water I'm sure flow. they could find a way to run it out the side of the house, but I think it's just easier running it straight up. It's easier. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm going to change the world, people. We're going to vent out the side of the house. You watch it. It's going to happen 10 years from now. Somebody's going to watch this video. They're going to be like, we're he called it. Where he called it. We're changing this shit. No more rubber boots. Because yeah, every, I mean, almost every probably fourth house I come to, the rubber boots are Yeah, I, I replace them all the time before the roof, the roof is bad. What about That's those a, covers that go over the top? You seen those? Oh, the little, the little, they look like it's, the little half moon black covers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can put them on. You I mean, know. I don't really know that they do any good. Are, are you talking about ones that go on the top of the actual soil stack pipe or the ones that actually fit over the old busted up boot? They fit over the busted up boot, like the plastic, they're black but, yeah, plastic. Yeah, thing. yeah, those, I guess th- those work, I guess. I I would think you just want to just take the old busted up stuff off and I would, put a new that one on. It would make sense. I would think that might be a temporary Yeah, patch, yeah, I know, it'll work for a while. It'll yeah, work for a while. Until the wind comes along. And- yeah, that's a... One of those products is boosted by Menards and Home Depot. So. Is it? Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've I've only seen a couple of them or whatever. And yeah. the 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 interesting part about it is that it's like a three piece connection thing, and then it goes and the cup is like inside, so it goes into the yeah. pipe. Well, and that's good because that's that mimics that, at least that part of it's good because that mimics yeah. when we when you use a lead boot, mm-hmm. you know, you fold it all the way in. They still it, have those lead boots. I oh saw yeah, yeah. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Lead boots. You know, they 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 won't ever rot, but. If you don't put them on right, you pound them a little too thin, then they do start to break. And that what that solder weld on the base can also come apart. Oh, sure, sure. But, uh, yeah. you know, really, if they, they last longer than the neoprene. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the rubber gets mm-hmm. stretched out and it gets heated up. And yeah, then, and it cracks. It cracks. Yep, yep. And that's the main thing. Um, the next thing is ventilation. Um, so w- with uh, roofing ventilation, box vents are the thing that's been around forever. They're still yeah. doing new homes with them today. Sure, sure. And the general rule is one box vent for every 300 square feet of attic space. Okay. However... Ridge vents are a thing, you know? And well, yeah, they provide so much more. And, yeah. you know, there's upsides and downsides to both. I know a lot of people have problems with, you know, the bees with their ridge vents. That seems yeah. to be the biggest issue. Yep. Sometimes on the ends, it's, they, they can be a bigger wind catch. Mm-hmm. But that's only if your house is facing in, in certain directions. Certain but directions. I, overall... The, the ridge vent's definitely the way to go. Yeah. And the box vents, sometimes if you have a lo- too large of a screen, you can also get snow in your attic. And stuff yeah, that's, like that. yeah, that's something you else. Know, yeah. The ridge vent's going to stop. blow right that. up in there. Yeah, the yeah. ridge vent's going to stop some of that. I, there was, I was, you ever, you ever seen the, the, the Helpful Handyman? It's like a website thing or whatever. Yeah. So they had this guy that went up there and put uh, cookie sheets underneath each of his uh, box vents <laughs> nice. just to stop the snow from yeah, getting yeah. into his ventilation, in, in, uh, into his insulation, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, you're going to put that much effort into that? Yeah. Let's get a better box vent or put a ridge vent in. Yeah, you know? I, I knew a commercial maintenance guy who was big on turkey roaster pans. Oh, <laughs> he, he put yeah. me over, well, it's just a, it's an occasional leak. Turkey roaster. And yeah. He was maintaining all kinds of large-scale oh commercial properties. That was one of his go-tos. <laughs> at the commercial property? With yes. That? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he was actually uh, yeah, he was uh, an engineer. And <laughs> he was probably getting lots of calls, too, because he's a cheap guy. Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah, my this gosh. Work. No good. No good. Uh, we did briefly talk about gutters before, but gutters are very important. Uh, we want to make sure we move that water away from their home, and it's all part of your roofing system. Um, so you got to have all that kind of stuff working together. So um, all those things are definitely very important pieces of your roof system, and you got to understand all that. If you're going to try to tackle any type of roofing project on your own, uh, it's always got to be considered how's the water going to get off this roof. And if you don't have that planned out properly you can screw things up and cause a lot of water damage in your home in a short period of time um so the next thing we talk about is the roofing the surface materials and, and choosing the right roofing material for your home is um important we talked briefly about some of the other um uh, different options and things like that asphalt shingles been around for ever for a really, really yep. long time um asphalt does deteriorate very quickly you're talking about a 15 to 18 year max lifespan generally yeah and i don't i don't really know anyone that makes them anymore no they're um, all gonna have the fiberglass uh, right yeah composition I, there's probably you know i i remember i used to see bargain ones that were called the 10 year shingles mm. you know the 10 year ones are super cheap you might as well and put the, a roll roofing on at that point and they, yeah yeah <laughs> so it's not even a step up from that <laughs> yeah yeah those those shingles they just don't last very long it's a cheap way to go and if you're if, if you if, need it you know at that it, time you know yep if you need it and you're just looking to save a buck and whatnot then it's a way to go but if you're going to be in the home for any period of time or yeah. you want to look at your resale value you know uh, you want to go with a little better material you know um typically the most common shingle installed today is an architectural composition dimensional shingle it's got fiberglass built into it and the asphalt and the granular um, but it is still a uh, traditional roofing, roofing material yep. you know um, um relatively reasonably priced um, it's dependable yeah dependable repairable gonna, 30 <laughs> to 50 years or, or what no what did you say 25 <laughs> to 50 or years? 35 to 50 years is the uh, limited lifetime warranty yeah now you guys one thing about roofing uh manufacturers is that they've been wrong about the lifespan of the product for their entire history and they're not shy about it either right. they'll keep what do you mean this is gonna last 50 years and they, well just yeah 
when the architecturals first came out, they were classified as a 25 year shingle. Then they realized they last longer. Then they bumped them up to 40. Then they yeah. bumped them up to 50. Now they're back down to, whoa, we went a little too far. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's just one of those things. Um, you know, your roof is not going to last forever. Um, but uh, it, it, buying a little bit better product is going to make it last longer, perform better, Definitely. less likely to have issues. Um, and uh, it, it also um, is uh, easier to install. You're going to have better warranties. All that kind of stuff goes yeah. along with it. It's all kind of worked in together. Now, um, when it comes to uh, architectural shingle, while that is by far the most common shingle used here in Wisconsin, Wisconsin and Illinois and maybe Tennessee, and you get south of that, you get different, some different materials. You can get into um, like uh, tile roofs and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, a lot of tile. Yeah, um, but that's not something that we really mess around with up here. Um, tile is, is just a different beast altogether. It's uh, purlins and all this other Yeah, it's, and it's expensive. It's expensive. You can't the weight is, is a lot more considerable. Depending on the pitch, you might need extra structural support. Yep, and guess what? It only comes in one color. <laughs> Orange. Orange. <laughs> Orange. That's it. Right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they're, they uh, they dissipate the heat well. That's why they use them in yeah. arid uh, yeah. climates and stuff like that. Um, they also, um, you know, are... Uh, insect resistant they're not going to uh, uh mold or or mildew or or rot like uh, a lot of other products will so there's a lot of good pluses that but just it's not a not, product not for, for here not for what's yeah. here where our temperature differences and things they, that well, yeah, would cracks, be cracked and cracks damaged them, yeah. you see them once in a while i inspected one up in port washington oh, sure. they actually went and painted the thing you know <laughs> they um, painted the tiles they painted the tiles okay. yeah and it was well, i've never I, seen that it was just the weirdest thing but it was a really old really old building um and uh, it used to be the original i think it was the original firehouse in port washington so was it the the spanish or was it uh, flat no it was a spanish tile oh, okay yeah it was and you just don't see it very often yeah. you know um and i'm like i'm not walking out on this thing so i flew the drone around and got some pictures and stuff but there was so many cracks and damages and take stuff. one of those slip out it's like oh the- my gosh yeah and guy and somebody had been well, can you imagine someone on, on the ground Oh my gosh! Catching you, one of those you, in the melon. You've seen <laughs> that in videos before where one yeah. goes, then they just start sliding yeah, down. Yeah, the thing. yeah, yeah. And I um, mean, people had gone out on the roof and done all kinds of repairs. There was all kinds of caulking, all kinds of weird stuff yeah. on it. But <laughs> yeah, they, those are just difficult to repair. Yeah, it's, it's just, just a, a hot mess. So I would avoid um, anything dealing with uh, those type of uh, clay tiles and stuff like that. Um, one of the things that we saw as a Kind of, I, I would see it as a, a brief window where people were, were um, installing cedar shake and cedar shingles. Um, it's kind of don't well, see a lot too of, much of um, anymore. homeowners associations required it. Bristol cone pines, yeah, well, a lot Dude, of them. A yeah. lot of them, you know, 15, yep. 20 years ago, and that's when cedar was reasonable. But now it's just, yeah. it's just, and, and they saw it as an elite feature. Yes, you know, so yeah. they required it on every single home, and we are elite, so we're going to put this expensive pro- and, and then when they find out that it costs them ten thousand bucks every six years, it costs them twice, twice it. the cost of the roof. Yeah, you know, during yep. the life of the roof to maintain it. Yeah, yep. and so now a lot of those HOAs and things have uh, gone to uh, heavy grade dimensionals. Heavy grade dimensionals, mm-hmm. a, a nice looking shingle uh, yep. that's required. They, yeah, they but, make sure you get a top of the line. Yep, but more durable, lasting longer, not. The maintenance issues, right. not the up, huge upfront costs and stuff, um, and uh, it's just a durable, more better product, you know. So they've gone away from a lot of that. And most HOAs, I still come across every once in a while. I come across one There's that'll a few. have them, you know. But uh, um, with the the cedar shake, most of the time they're not maintained, so they just right. start splitting I all still, over the place. I get, I get a lot of calls for repairs on them yet. Yeah, yeah. So. and there's guys. There's there's one company that I refer out that all they do is wood roof mm-hmm. repairs. They drive around and repair roofs and wash yeah. roofs, yeah, and yeah, stain I, roofs and like, uh, you're spending ten grand to have these guys come and wash your roof every six right, years, right? And they'll replace a few shakes it. here yeah, and there yeah. and restain and, it. Yeah, and you're gonna spend They're that making 10, great money. You're gonna spend that ten grand again yeah. in another six years. Yep. Just take that twenty grand, put a new roof, get a new on roof on, and be done with it. Be done with it for the next thirty freaking years. You know, it just. You can't. I, I, a lot of times, people they they're too cheap up front and they don't think about the long term right. implications of their cheap choices. Oh well, yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> I wasn't looking at anybody. I wasn't looking at anybody. <laughs> uh, but ultimately, you guys uh, put a, put a good product on your roof, and it does, it's going to save you lots of money in the long run in maintenance and that kind of stuff, and just yeah, better for you. Um, now, metal roofing is an option. Um, I, there was a, there's a little town. Not, it's not a little town. It's a little subdivision up in Belgium where okay. every single house was built by the same builder, and they did all metal roofs, and every one of them is a different color, you know. But they're all the flat. They're all the, the crap overlap, flap. the crap <laughs> flap stuff, and so they're going to end up in in about 10, 15 years. They're all going to have those deteriorated uh, rubber washers. They're going to need to be replaced, right. and that's a lot of work, you know. But uh, metal roofing is uh, a, a cheap installation if you're doing it on your own type of thing, you know. Right, and it's not that 
it's not that difficult to do. No, you know, it's not, it's not you that get it in sheets, to cut to the right size. You can just kind of put them on, lay it yep. out like a puzzle. <laughs> but you, if you're doing the the, the flap crap, you got to know you're going to be going up there in 10, 15 years, replacing every one of those washers that you just right. put down. Or um, you're up there putting clear poly on each uh, one, and then it, then that gets dirty, and then you got to peel it off. It's just, just a pain. A, it's yeah, just a pain. It, yeah. yeah. Just a, um, if you're going to do a good metal roof, you're going to pay for it. Um, probably double what an asphalt shing- or a composition shingle yeah, would easily, cost. Yeah, easily depending you. on what yeah. type of standing seam you go with. Yeah, yeah. Standing seam is really the only way to go if you're going to go with a metal roof of, of that's going to be of quality. It's right. going to have that deferred maintenance that you're looking for. And you you're know? not going to see any of that warped that you see from the large, you know, flat panels. Yep. So. Yep. Exactly. And you want to buy a, a, a good quality company that's going to install it so that you don't have problems down the road, and they're going to someone will come right... back and service it when there's yep. an issue. Yep. And they'll put in the right brakes and all that kind of stuff that you need with a metal roof. It's just. Uh, and it's a, it's a it's a craft though. Those guys, yeah. I mean, they they just do some beautiful work. We've seen some of those copper roofs and oh stuff like that my. around the I North Shore. Couldn't even imagine oh how much gosh. you pay for all that custom copper work, all the flashings. Gorgeous though, yeah, gorgeous stuff. But uh, it does take a lot of effort and uh, skill. So yeah, I mean, the more power to them. But those metal roofs are going to last a good long time. So the the clay, the slate tile, the solar tiles, the grass roofs, Al Johnson. <laughs> Let's get some goats. Put is them it, up on that, the roof. That, that's the one up in Door yeah. County. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. that. My kids it's thought still, that's the best thing oh, ever. Oh, that's the coolest thing. Yeah, uh, Tammy, we'll we'll find a picture of Al Johnson and so put the goats on the roof on the up on this, the video here. Um, but uh, yeah, we still go up here and see them. And now yeah, you yeah, can yeah. feed them. They'll let you feed oh, them and stuff. Know. Yeah, like, remember at the at the like a zoo where you turn the thing. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. They got one of those yeah, in front yeah. of the goats. The roof comes down low and the goats will come down. And you can nice. feed them and stuff. Um, I always thought that was cool. That was still cool. Yeah, and they got some of the best Swedish pancakes you ever done did have up there. So Al Johnson's up in Door County. There's a pitch. If you want to want to sponsor the channel, hey Al Johnsons, we love you. Ultimately, um, you know those are they're a, they're a pink whale. Right. You don't hardly yeah. ever see those guys, you know. And and oh Tesla roof. Okay, you, you might find what you is know, a Tesla tile? I don't even Tesla know. tile. It's a uh, basically. Um, you, is that is that a solar tile? It's a solar okay. tile that actually gets. Uh, so you've seen those new metal roofs that they came out with those solar, the, not the, yeah, the, the, they're like the metal yeah, granularized yes. that they screw in, you know. Which so I don't these know how are long. like those are like so, solar screw in tiles. Mm-hmm. Yep, and then they overlap each other, and basically your whole roof is a solar panel. Okay. Um, Kind of cool, but then you have each individual one has a little wire that goes right. through it. Whole, you wonder how they, that's oh got that's God, pretty dude. This is, involved. That's, that's like a two hundred fifty thousand dollar roof. Yeah, those uh, the metal more. granular ones. Those are those are ridiculous. <laughs> They're ridiculously in expensive. Price. Yes, they and look pretty nice. But the, what happens when you when you dent them? You know, well, well, when they get dented, or uh, how long is that granite going to stay on there? That's Under another the thing. Stuff. I mean, yeah. they're they're relatively untested. They're what, probably what five years ago. Yeah, they they're yeah, to they're out. they're not old. And you you got to wonder when it, the more that it expands, especially being metal like that, you figure mm-hmm. it's got to knock those granules loose I at some think, point. Yeah, I mean, even if it even if it's uh, not a hard hail, you know, uh, oh, those yeah. little anything like metal, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. would take it out, but. It looks cool. It does. But incredibly expensive. So yep. um, if you want to go that route, go for it. They're, they're advertising a lot. Oh, we were looking for roofs to put our shingles oh, yeah, on. I'm Give for, us a call. Yeah, and, yeah. and they're not giving you free roof, guys. No, I know. <laughs> it's, they're going to come to you with a $200,000 bill or whatever, and that's just going to be what it is. But um, do your research. Um, rubber roofing. I I come across a lot of rubber roofs. Rubber roof is just the, the good, easy standard. Yep. You 20, can make it workable. Yep. So. 25, 30 years with your right. general single ply. Uh, a fully adhered is decent. Yep. So. Yep. Exactly. And uh, repairable. Um, but it, it also has its challenges with sure. you got to have, if you have, if you're that flat of a roof, you got to be really concerned about load support because you're going to have a, all that snow and ice is just going to sit there. It's not going to go off like it would with a regular roof. It's just going to sit there. Also, any water, if there's unlevelness at all, it's going to pond and pond, puddle. You know? And that'll, that'll eat away at any seams that are there. So that'll yep. quicken yep. it up. Um, they do have different kinds. So the majority of the rubber roofs that we come across are black rubber roofs. And yep. um, sometimes we'll have a, a roof that'll have multiple surfaces and there might be one little section that's rubber. The rest will be asphalt or whatever. But you sure. can mix it up or whatever how you need to. But black rubber is the most common. Um, it does melt the snow and and allows that's the water a, to trickle, thing. which yeah. is nice. Um, it also does add a lot of heat to your attic space if there is an attic space or above the the top of your house. You know, um, they do make uh, white rubber roofs, which right. I'm a big fan of because I think that those with dissipating the heat, the seams and stuff, mm-hmm. are going to last a little bit longer. Um, most of those seams aren't heat adhered; they're going to be chemically adhered, which. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, you got your your EPDM, which is the rubber. Then you get yep. your TPO, which is a combination of 
PVDM and PVC. Yeah. The TPO is, is glued and welded seams. Yeah. Where the PVC is just mechanically fastened and welded. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's lots of different options as far as. Uh, you can mix all those up. Yeah. You can mix them all up <laughs> if you want to. Yeah. But the uh, rubber roof, uh, 25, 30 years, generally speaking, well installed. Should, yeah. If it's installed right with good quality. Yeah. Yep. Um, now, uh, some people always, when I, there, I was down and did a, uh, a condo down on, uh, what was it? Third Street, something like that in Milwaukee. And they had, it was probably a six-story building. And the the roof had all kinds of stones all over it. And they're like, oh, why, is there, why is that there is stones the all over the place? That is the cheapest rubber roof you can get. That's I'm why like, they put it on. Why Why? why is there stones? Well, because <laughs> nothing nothing is glued. Yeah. It's a big, loose sheet of rubber, seamed and seamed. Yep. And, of course, there's, you know, strips that, you know, that nail it to the deck and the walls. But the only thing that holds it down is all that stone. All that stone, 2,000 yeah. pounds per, per square. That's a, a lot 10 by 10 stone. section. <laughs> yeah. And and if you have to replace it, uh, all they do is they push the stone over to one side, replace the section. And yeah. Kind of or, they, or they the just, you room. have the vacuum company. They got like, it looks like a regular house vacuum. Oh, thing. really? And it puts it right into a tank and then they can pump it right back up. Oh, I've never seen that before. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, but they are, that's a pain in the ass of a that's roof. A, I, I've I done a few of those, wanna, and it's like, yeah. I would not want to mess with anything like that. Well, and yeah. repairs for those, you got to mm-hmm. shovel all the stone to find a seam, and then it's been harboring years and years of dirt that you got to get through to even get to the repairs. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, and every once in a while, the guys walk around up there, step on a hard stone or sure. an edge of a, a stone that's got a chip anything. in or something, and now it's cuts. Well, a, anyone that's working on the HVAC units, they, you know, those guys leave screws laying all over. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> there it goes. Absolutely. But it is, yeah, it's the most affordable type of. Uh, roof system mostly like on a lot of new construction big you know factory buildings mm-hmm. and things like that that's why people go with it yeah yeah um now as far as roofing materials go there are like we said uh, there's uh, the sod roof the tessa tiles the thatch roof uh thatch roof is primarily like not in america you're not gonna no. see that anywhere um you might see some adobe roofs down in uh, the south oh. uh, the arid southwest right i mean arizona area you know sure. um but uh not very common um the slate stuff uh that's incredibly expensive too, right? You know, and I see some guys that uh, that work on that. I'm like, holy man! The way you just chip those little holes with that hammer, you know what? Like Holy Hill, and I know this was about 15 years ago, maybe 20. You know, and they're all slate roof. Just for their repair budget that year, 20 years ago was a million and a half for that's repairs. That's, <laughs> and that's a lot of those homes on the North Shore. You yeah, know, you go over to Whitefish yeah. Bay, you go over to um, uh, Nicolay, and that's uh, that's sure. a lot of those old houses. Yeah, that's what they're going to have. Yeah, and it, it's uh, incredibly expensive to install, but incredibly expensive to repair and stuff like that. Right. As well. well, almost nobody does that anymore. Yeah, nobody. I does mean, that's it. complete specialty and, work. Yeah, and guys don't walk out on that stuff anymore. They all are getting lifts and they're getting right. those pitch lifts. And well, stuff. you can't take a chance of cracking it and making more issues. You know, yeah, it's just it's just just too expensive. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Avoid exotic roofing materials. You don't want to mess with those at all, unless you got a lot, a lot of money and better. And you don't. Have I want, I want the mud roof. <laughs> the mud roof, yeah. The the adobe roof, yeah. Well, and that's in 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 the arid southwest. They don't get a lot of rain. I mean, right. air, in the down by uh, the Grand Canyon and stuff. That well, where was that meteorite thing that we saw, honey? Where they said that it only got like an inch of rain every. Uh, oh, was it where the big six, crater is? Yeah, 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 yeah. The meteor crater. They're like, yeah, I think only, that's that's for the Tour de Phoenix, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. We only get like an inch of rain every year, or whatever. So that's why it hasn't eroded this all, and it's you know, right. maintained. Um, and in those kinds of, uh, it's in Arizona. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. But, you know, it's uh, an option if you're down in there, but definitely not in Wisconsin. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be growing pine trees out of it and right. stuff, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, and then as far as the cost associated with roofing materials, um, a lot of people look at the upfront cost of the materials, but there's so much more that goes into it, the installation right, and the submaterials and stuff. Yeah, nowadays it's the major cost is the labor. The materials are really nothing compared to yep, yeah. where things I mean, are nowadays. Maybe uh, tw- the materials are probably 25% of the bill. Ish. Yeah, it depends. Depends who's doing the bidding, but yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But back in the day, it was like 50 50. Oh, yeah. And then the materials were just, yeah, they were dirt cheap. I, yeah. mean, I remember buying, you know, a square of shingles for 10 bucks. You know, yeah. Now it's 150. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and then uh, as far as cost associated with installation, you, you got to think that the person that's uh, doing the installation doesn't only just have to pay for the shingles, but they also have to pay for the truck, their insurance, and everything else mm-hmm. that goes along with that. And all of those things have gotten progressively more expensive over the years. So, 
I mean, it makes sense that, that, that it's more expensive, but we also have a labor shortage right now. You were up on a roof today, 93 degrees on the roof, okay? There's not a lot of guys that are going to want to jump up there with, yeah, let's do this. Nobody wants to do no, that. No, they don't. <laughs> and, and they're not going to want to do it for 15 bucks an hour, you right. know? So, yeah, you got to pay a premium price for that kind of stuff. Um, so that's a big why, reason why those things are so much more expensive right now. So don't be shocked the next time you go to replace your roof, you're looking at, uh, I mean, you, if you paid six to $8,000 10 years ago, it's a, Fifteen to twenty thousand. Yeah, easily worth. double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now uh, one, two, three layers. I'm a fan of one. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I know the the code was like a lot of uh, like the older houses that had a little more pitch to them. They had the cedar shakes, and then yeah. you were allowed two more layers of asphalt. Oh, uh, on top okay. of that, that's legal. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with putting a second layer on as long as the first layer is laying flat and you don't have any issues with it and you're not concerned about any deck problems. Yeah. But, you know, if you want to make sure, you just take it off. <laughs> yeah. The the best way to go, in my opinion, what I, what I, if anybody comes to me and asks, I'm going to tell sure. them. Sure. Well, always, then you're covered. Oh, then yeah. there's, not, there, there's no exceptions. Yep. Always do a full tear off. You're going to find out if there's any problems with the roof deck. Sure. Okay. And if the roof decking has problems and you put a new roof over the top of it, guess what? Now, when, it, when that, that uh, decking problem becomes comes right a head problem then you're going to be tearing off the new shingles that you just put on yeah they allow they allow three in uh like in Waukee county areas. really yeah oh. you have to you just call in for like, an easement such and they an let it awful do it. idea well a lot of yeah. that's in like this the rental areas yeah you know. and and i mean if the shingles are all curled up and nasty right you're throwing shing- yeah it's it's something yeah. else putting shingles over the top of deteriorated shingles is going to limit is going to um decrease the lifespan of the new product you're putting on you're not going to find pro- problems with the decking underneath you also can't improve the shing the, the you can't surface. put ice and you water shield on it was shield. Down. Yeah. You can't put metal valleys in it if, if you didn't have them before. I mean, it's just well. I guess maybe you can you put could, metal in. You could put some sure. metal valley in, but um, yeah, definitely something that uh, you know, getting that uh, uh, deck looked at and taken care of um, is it. I think important to me, you know, because you don't want to have to do it again. Right. You know, you don't want to have to mess with it. So um, I would always suggest one layer. Some municipalities do allow two to three layers, though. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, most municipalities, uh, you know, in like uh, Hartford, Mountie Falls, Germantown, Waukesha, two layers, I think, is the two max layers is two layers is pretty much the normal everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, as far as longevity of building materials, um, the uh, the shingles, uh, it, as far as the the roof goes, as long as the shingles or the surface material is in good shape, the materials underneath it could last a really long. I mean, ice and water shield can last. Oh yeah, a long long time. Right. Yeah. Well, you won't ever get it off. Like yeah. when you. You tear a roof off and it's got ice and water shield on there. I mean, there's no way it's coming off. I mean, mm-hmm. you could, you could, maybe someone can do it, but I can't. Uh, <laughs> and it's not worth the time and effort. Right. You know? Well, yeah, yeah, you're putting another a fresh layer over it anyway. Yep. So, yep. And, and you're double protected then, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the longevity of building materials really is determined by what the surface is and, and the surface uh, longevity. We kind of talked a little bit about that with the differences between uh, metal, asphalt, um, rolled roofing. You'll see that once in a while. It's a 10 year max on rolled roofing. Yeah, it it's just doesn't. Like, I mean, I used to you see a lot of it on barns. Yeah. Where the guys would go up to the peak. And let it roll down, and the guy in the bottom's like, ah, I yeah, catch it. <laughs> yeah. It, it roll roofing, you guys, is kind of like asphalt shingle, but rolled up into a big roll, and yep. it's really thin, you know? Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like a three foot roll. So, yeah. Yep. And it covers a lot of area fast, um, and it usually gets glued, But it buckles and cracks. Glued down, buckles Sometimes, cracks. yeah, it's just no matter what you do to it, it just doesn't seem to. It just doesn't hold up. But yeah. it's cheap. It is cheap. It is cheap. If you're looking for a cheap way to do a, a shed or something like that, maybe. Right. That's why I like guys use it on barns. It's so much it. material, you know, mm-hmm. you just. Yeah, knock it out. We'll deal with it in five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll take care of it then. You know, but uh, that's just pushing pushing the cart down the road. Um, roof pitch considerations. Uh, so roof pitch needs to be considered when you're choosing the type of roofing material that you're going to put on your roof. If you have a flat pitch, flat pitch roof or roof less than two uh, two twelve, probably right. Yeah, that, it, I, it, even under a three. I mean, yeah. anything under three, you should use a membrane. Use a membrane, yeah. And, and there, you're talking almost flat roofing materials for the most yep. part. Okay, um, when you're uh, at uh, four twelve or greater, um, the greater your pitch, the faster the snow, ice, and water is going to run off your roof, and the shingles are going to last a little bit longer. Um, but if you get too steep, like in a gambrel situation, now the shingles are like this, and they're hanging by these nails, and a little bit of heat, and they, and they always put black shingles on. And I don't yeah. know why they do that because that's going to absorb all. 
the heat. Yeah, and yeah the, they, you, you're supposed to put extra nails in each yeah, of those. Yeah, you're supposed yeah. to put extra nails. And then it just pulls right through. And I mean, almost every Gambrel roof I come across, the shingles are hanging down. Right. And the edges, it, like, it's always an issue. Yeah, it's always a problem. It's never the great idea. <laughs> never a great idea. Put I've, the siding I, on there instead. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Like a lap siding or whatever right. would be so right. much better. But uh, yeah, it, Gambrel roofs, not a big fan, but usually only see those these days on uh, apartment buildings. Apartments, the second story apartments. Yep. yep with the little porches that come out. Yep, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> We've all seen them. Uh, as far as uh, roofing materials to avoid, avoid rolled roofing. Um, it's uh, not going to last very long, but it's it's a cheap in a, in, in, a, in a pinch like we were talking about. Is there any other roofing materials you'd avoid? <coughs> uh, no, not not really. I mean, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the live roof, like the grass stuff. And, and oh yeah, no, that's that's not for yeah, me either. You, you, that you, that you have to be. It's so many layers that have to be built up to be able to do that yeah. realistically. Yeah, I wouldn't even mess with. <laughs> I don't have like enough that. time. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. As far as uh, storm chasers, if somebody's coming up knocking on your door wanting to go at your roof, that's not the person you want. Uh, you I'm get the taillight about. warranty. Yep, yep. And the exactly. taillight's gone. The warranty is too. I did that roof. I don't remember doing that roof. My yep. company and it changed names <laughs> yeah. three times now. You know. Um. Ultimately, you want to hire a a good quality contractor that you know and trust. Um. Yeah, most storm chasing companies are, are just sell and sub to whoever will do it. Yep. Pound yep. it and move on to the next state. Yep, exactly. Um, ask around. Talk to people. Find out who in your area would do a good thing, uh, do good work or whatever. If you don't know how to go about doing that, drop me a line and help a homeless better. I'd be happy to help you go through that process or whatever, and I'll do it at no cost to you. The uh, next thing we have is skylight, sun tubes, ventilation. Ventilation we talked briefly about, but skylights and sun tubes. I skylights probably every third one I come across has leaks right. or f- flashing issues or whatever. They ask, does the skylight come with a guarantee? I guarantee it'll be an issue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> always, always. Um, sun tubes. I've seen pretty. good. Oh, those are great. Yeah, I've and because those good. are you, those are flashed in nice with you know with your shingles and yep. that. Yeah, I've not had a lot of problems with those. Yeah, and it's basically got that plastic dome over yep. the top, so you don't have to worry about the thermal, thermal paint issues and stuff. Yep. Um, and it basically just goes on like a roof boot, you know, like yeah. a, a a vent boot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, sun tubes definitely. Definitely the way to go. Um, what my guy Dustin put one on, and uh, he loves it. I mean, it's, yeah. and, those, and it's amazing how reflective it is, and yeah. how it can really light up a room. You yeah, know? those prisms that they put on there. It's yeah. like a, it's like the, the sun tube's like a, a dome on the top. The sun comes in. It's got a reflective tube on the inside. Yeah. It's a mirror finish, so that sunlight reflects and bounces all the way down. And then there's a prism at the bottom, kind of like a, like an old time ships would have. And the sun mm-hmm. like disperses um, once it's in there, and, or moonlight. I mean, if it's a moonlight yeah, even night, the moon, yeah, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. If it's a moonlit night, you'll look. It'll look. The, sun, the lights are on in, in that bathroom or whatever, you know. But uh, also, they don't have the interior moisture issues because, like, skylights, people always put oh, them in the bathroom. Yeah. And then it's or, got this or, or big, in the kitchen above the stove. Yeah, yeah. It's like this big tunnel where all this moisture is <laughs> yeah. going to go up and sit, and then they get surprised there's condensation stains. It's like, ugh, you know, skylights just a, uh, something I'd avoid. Um, and we've used the term a couple times a square. A square is basically a 10 by 10 section, mm-hmm. um, and that's kind of how roofers a lot of times will price their, their job. That's pricing, yeah. Yeah, and because uh, uh, a square tells them um, what they need for underlayment. It tells them what they mm-hmm. need for shingles. It tells them what they need for flashing materials and stuff, um, just kind of how they grade the, the roof and, and what that replacement is going to be. So, yeah. Any other terms that you guys use that? Average Joe wouldn't know. No, not really. Not really. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times the woodworkers, when they come to talk to you about it, they'll talk in terms of squares. So so that's what that is. And a bundle of shingles is not a square. <laughs> right. Uh, well, Depending many, on the shingle, um, yeah. some, some are three to a square, some are four to a square, some are even five. Depends on the reveal? Well, yeah, and it depends, like, how thick the shingle oh, is okay. and... Sure, sure. And some of them, you know, they're the way they lock together, they go together in a pattern to form or something, you know. Oh, okay. It's because some of those are like a four inch exposure, five inch, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, that is roofing basics. If you have any questions about roofs, we're still here to answer those questions. You guys can drop those in, in the comments or whatever. We'd be happy to help you out. Uh, now, the uh, next thing we're going to get into is the top five enemies of your roof. There are some enemies of your roof. Oh, yeah. Things that can be bad. Um, and uh, the, the first one, I'll take for the poor installation. That's um, the big one. That's the big <laughs> one. Yeah. If, if a roof is poorly installed, it's not going to hold up. It's not going to last. Yeah, it's, it's not going to take much to take it down. Yeah. Or cause leaking. I right. Mean, you could, if somebody puts a roof in bad, you're, you're gonna, you could even know within a week. You know, yeah. as soon as that first rain comes, you're going to start seeing signs of it being a problem. And uh, definitely something to... to um, Get correct, corrected sooner rather than later. Make sure you're working with a reputable contractor. Make sure they have insurance because if they don't and they cause a lot of damage to your house or something like that or their ladder falls on your truck or whatever, I mean, yeah. 
Yeesh. you're working with a fly by night guy. Good luck. You know, yeah, well, yeah. Gonna... And then you spend just as much money chasing him down as getting what you can. <laughs> yeah, get. exactly. Yeah. Your lawyer is going to cost you the same amount of cost to replace the whole roof. <laughs> right. You know, poor installation is number one. Number two, well, sun, oh, temperature, yeah. you know, well, uh, and as far as uh, the sun goes, the sun's going to beat up on your roof. And, and if you have, um, you know, uh, a straight Southern exposure, that's going to be the first side of your roof that's going to deteriorate. So that's yeah, the definitely. You Especially here. Yeah. 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 yeah right, really. I mean, and when that sun comes down, you guys, you're talking about UV rays. You're talking about the excessive heat. Like yeah. today it was 75 degrees out and Sean was up on the roof today and it was 93 degrees up on the roof. Yep. So you're adding 20 to 30 degrees of temperature at the surface. I mean, that's. A lot. And if you um, look at shingles, if you go with a lighter color shingle, we dissipate that a little bit. What do you think? I think it takes a little bit longer to heat up to what the other ones would be, but I don't think it makes You're a still difference. Gonna get hot. Yeah. yeah. Still you still might, you might save you a little bit of time, yeah. you know, but yeah. it's it's negligible. Well, and some people might also say that the, the, the darker shingle is going to uh, melt the snow and, and ice faster to get it off your roof. And right. If, the, if we can keep a roof dry, it's less likely to have sure. problems too, right? Um, the next thing is wind. Wind is probably the, the most most common issue roofs have you know hail damage is one of them on this list as well but hail's not as what, frequent as right wind. and you know a lot of times you come out and you know a lot of times i don't even know why some of these people are getting approved because i can't see the damage on there a lot of times yeah but, yeah. yeah well and with with wind damage um it's, that, you all, that you can always see you can always see it's always going to flip that shingle off or whatever and it's going to be gone um and or f- the 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 asphalt shingles the three tabs you know you always see that with the tabs yeah, flap or whatever yeah um but uh, one of the things you guys can do to see if you have wind damage or sun damage is uh to go out of your house go across the street i can't tell you how many times i've stopped by neighbors in our subdivision here and hey do you know you've had missing shingles on your roof for the last year <laughs> yeah. and a half you know and really i never looked at my roof well go across the street over here with me i'm going to show you something and all it takes sometimes is walking across the street take a look up at your roof i don't expect you to fly a drone i don't expect you to walk on your roof okay walking on the roof getting on a ladder is very dangerous do not go up there unless you know exactly what you're doing a lot okay? of people don't know until they find them in the in the yard <laughs> uh, yeah yeah no good but uh yeah definitely uh wind hail uh, and then the, the next one is humans uh, roof rakes uh, yeah, <laughs> oh my gosh you guys okay menards fleet farm home depot stop selling roof rakes we don't need them okay you do not need it if you have a problem that you think needs a roof rake, you need to call somebody because th- then there's a problem with your roof, okay? Um, our roofs are designed and structurally built to support a 60-inch snow load. That's what the engineering here in Wisconsin is for. We haven't had a 60-inch snow load in... I can't remember ever having a 60 inch snow load. I mean, you could go back and look historically maybe, but um, yeah, your roof is designed to hold more snow than you could ever imagine. Okay. Um, and uh, you shouldn't have to be, have to rake it off. If you're getting ice buildup and you think you're getting ice dams because of the snow in your roof, that's, that's an insulation and ventilation issue. It's not uh, and, and a problem with how your roof is, is designed or whatever, how you're, you know, the roof is managing the heat of uh, the the that's escaping from your home, you know. Um, but roof rakes, you're going to go up there, you're going to start scraping and scratching your shingles, you're going to cause all kinds of damage. That now you got yeah, bottom it. three feet. Yeah, yeah, you'll see them, and then people go up there, and the the roof rake isn't always sitting flat or flush. And yes, they put these two little wheels on the bottom. You know, <laughs> you never get on the two little wheels. People, there's snow and ice up there, so you're that metal edge is going and digging yep. in there, and just causing all kinds of damage. So no roof rakes okay no shoveling don't go up on your roof with a shovel it's a it, you see the, the crazy videos of like people yeah you know, when they slide all the way yeah, up yeah <laughs> and they have these big huge sheets of things you know that's not you okay that's not you, us here in wisconsin uh maybe in upper michigan they'll get they'll get huge snow loads and things like that but that's not something that you're gonna see down here um and uh blackjack black roof cock awful idea you know yeah um blackjack roof cock that kind of stuff is uh, a temporary patch it's gonna fail yep. you know and if you're just putting it on there to uh, cover up a nail or something that's one thing sure you know um but if you're putting it on there to patch a hole that's definitely or flash a work. chimney <laughs> how many times have you seen <laughs> tons <laughs> just hey, gummed up. flex seal oh my god people gosh. love flex seal yeah they, I okay see, i see it on everything oh my god you guys just because it fixed can... the gutter it fixed the chimney yeah. it fixed the roof yeah, I can, and my car it fixed my boat i put <laughs> yeah. it on the bottom of my boat and i can ride on a lake look at this business you know it's just uh, you guys it, th- that stuff is fine and there's a place for the flex seal's got a sure. place but it's got a place as a temporary patch that's it it's not a permanent fix at all okay um so avoid flex seal avoid blackjack avoid cock avoid roof rakes and your roof will be 
better for it. Okay. Um, our tip of the week uh, this week, dig out your window wells, folks. We got rainy season coming. We want to make sure that those window wells are um, being managed properly because if you let, if you have that dirt up and you got a wood window in your window well, that water is going to, it's a water protrusion in, you know, point all the time that we see. So the window well, um, the gravel at the bottom, the drainage material should be six inches below the window. Six inches, okay, below that window. And there should be some uh, drainage there. You know, you want to have some gravel, you want to have some sand and that kind of stuff to dissipate that water down into the soil. Um, but it doesn't take very long. Get a little shovel, take a little time, maintain and take care of your home, okay? Yeah, that's it for today, man. All Thanks right. for coming out, Sean. Appreciate it, buddy. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Appreciate you. This stuff goes home with you. We got a little uh, coffee mug and a little... Um, wireless charger in there for you um but uh, yeah thanks for sean to coming out today if you guys have any chimney repairs that you need uh he's been doing a lot of that recently um or if you need roof repairs give him a call he'll see what he can do for you he's always very helpful um and uh, always been there for us whenever we have uh inspection questions and things like that uh but uh sean very useful a resource for us and we appreciate him um but uh, yeah if you ever need him give him a call jo lifetime roof and chimney germantown he's also up on our website you can go on there and uh that west bend as well Oh, West Bend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but we do have a, uh, a link to his website, and then we also have um, a uh, telephone number for him. You can contact him, and he'd be happy to help you out. Sure. But yeah, thanks for coming out today, buddy. Hey, thanks for tuning in today, you guys. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you want to know when we put out the next one, give me a bell notification. It's a little bell on the bottom right-hand side. And subscribe. Uh, you want to know when I'm coming out with new stuff or whatever. You want to be able to uh, check us out and be alerted to new videos, content coming your way. Um, subscribe button is really the way to go. Thanks again for tuning in, you guys. Remember, the better you take care of your house, the better it's going to take care of you. Have a good one.